everyone. Welcome to the branch. Those of you who are standing, excellent. We're just going to go ahead and continue our worship time. So if you are able, would you stand with us as we sing a couple more songs of praise to our God. There you go.
You know what, guys? Can we sing that chorus one more time? We'll just take, like, one chord. Just voices. Just voices. All the voices in this room, all right? Let's just praise them this morning. You ready? Amen. Oh, praise the name. Praising Jesus, yes. loving Jesus, yes. amen. amen. You know, I just looked over here to my right, and I saw Greg sitting there, the far right, uh, in January. January, he is going to be, his band is going to be featured here at Heavenly Perks. And I want to tell you what, I want to tell you what, they're good, because they were here for Darley Green today, there's people here from Darley Green today, and you heard him play. And they were great. And we loved it. It's a wonderful day. And speaking of Heavenly Perks Cafe, that's this Saturday night. Normally we don't have perks in the summertime, like July and August. But we're having it this year at 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock on the patio. We have a, a band coming somewhere in between. Everything. Everything. Everything in between. I asked them. I heard them singing over in Hebrews. And I asked them what their name meant. Nobody could tell me, so I didn't ask them anymore. But but this is what I know. They're very good. So you want to come out? I will not be here. To, I have some family um, uh, uh, business in Lancaster County that night. But my wife, Denise, is going to be here, and she's going to be opening and having the prayer and, and doing all of that instead of me being here. So I want to thank Denise for doing that. But it's going to be a good, good time. This Saturday night... None threatening. Invite people out. Come to Heavenly Perks Cafe. The food, all the food is going to be free. You mean hamburgers and everything is going to be free, and free music, Hallelujah. and free fun. Yeah, you're going to have come and have fun. Right. Ain't going to cost you nothing. So I want to invite you out. Invite your friends. Bring your lawn chairs. We're going to have a wonderful time here in the patio this Saturday night from four o'clock to six o'clock. I do want to pray for a, a woman by the name of Mrs. Lober. Mrs. Lober is, um, her, her, her brother's is Pete Clark, and my wife Denise works for Lawyers Downtown, and he's one of the attorneys there, and he's praying for his sister. His sister's my age. She had a heart transplant, and, and, and what I find really remarkable is that he asked us. He came to us and said, would you pray for my sister? Now, now, folks, that's, that's something. When you do that, you put yourself out there and say, would you pray for my sister? And so we, we are Mrs. For, Mrs. Lober. And we also want to pray for the situation down in Charlottesville, Virginia. Now, uh, Denise's daughter and uh, son-in-law, rather, son and daughter-in-law live there. And it's a beautiful city. I was there. I did their wedding down there in Charlottesville. And it's a beautiful area. There's a beautiful United Methodist Church there. And there's a, a family downstairs where their son lives a mile away from all this commotion and, and, and things. So we, we think about it, pray about it, and just remember that, um, that our prayers do make a difference. And we want to pray for that. 
couple of weeks ago, I received this letter from someone, and, um, and I think it's so cool I need to share it with you. And what it is, they were here a, a day that we announced um, about money, about coming into the summertime when attendance is usually down and giving is usually down. And, and we made an announcement about that. And there, there was a visitor here that day. I can't give you her name. But she said that she was here, she heard the announcement, and she mailed a check-in for $2,000. Wow. Now, yeah, yeah. Now, what she did there, what she did there was she made an investment in this church. See, she made an investment. And that's what we, may, we need to do. She may not have, you, we may not be able to give $2,000. But we can think about it, and if we can't make a monetary investment, yesterday I had, uh, I want to thank these ladies for doing it, I had four or five ladies come in and clean the youth room. You remember you used to do house cleaning? Well, maybe you still do. My mom always did that. Spring house cleaning, linen fall house cleaning, right? Yeah. So that's what we did. We house cleaned the office yesterday. Uh, they, the, that was done earlier in the week. But they house cleaned the, 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 the youth room. It looks like a million bucks in there. If you've never seen a million bucks, go in there and take a look. It's there. Also, we are looking to have a bus ministry here. We're looking to buy a bus. But before we do, we need to know if people are on, 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 um, in this with us. So if you're interested in a bus ministry here, or if you say you'd like to help with that, Anyway, driving the bus, you, you don't need a special license for this bus. But, but you may want to come out. You may want to be part of it. If you are, let me know. I have already people signing up for it. But we want to see the needs. I had a woman this morning. She said her need is she's legally blind and she can't get to church here. Somebody has to always bring her. If we had a bus, we'd pick her up. So think about these things and pray about them. And this is something else. I'm a needy person today. Now, I'm a needy person every day. You can ask Mrs. Hornberger if I'm a... Is, is, is Pastor John a needy person? Yes. Here's what else I need. Last, for the last maybe eight years, we've been having Thanksgiving dinners here. And Darl and Sandra have always done it. They retire. They love to do it. They wanted to do it. We feed a couple hundred people here on Thanksgiving Day, and it's wonderful. Last year, a woman stepped up and, and did it. Uh, she needed a lot of help in order to do it, but she's moved away. So, so here's the situation that I'm in. Needy Pastor John. We need, if you're interested, to keep this ministry going, the Thanksgiving dinner, we need a group of about 25 people. I need a leader. I need somebody that say, Pastor John, I will lead this. I will do it. And we need at least a team of 25 people to work it out because I'm telling you, it's a lot of work. It is not easy. I've been in it for the last eight or nine years. Then the day of the Thanksgiving dinner, we need about 40 or 50 people here. It's a big deal. It's a big job. And if you, God is laying anything on your heart, you come to me and say, Mary Pastor John, you call Lynn in the office and say, Lynn, I want to talk to Pastor John about this. Do it because it's a need that we have here in the church. So, so think about that. And lastly, of the announcements, I received a, le a, a, a letter from uh, a young man that went down to our camp, and he said, "I just wanted to say thank you and the church for of the atonement for giving me the opportunity to spend the week at Camp Atonement. I had the greatest time of my life there. The greatest time of his life was there." And I used to see him because I taught Bible study there. I was, there was four children from our church there. Were, were any of you guys at camp? You were camp and you were at camp, right? And you loved it, didn't you? It was a great time, right? Say yes, Pastor John. Yeah. And, uh, and we had more. We had more earlier in the summer and we had more this past week. We sent a lot of children to camp and I'm very, very happy. Don't we, Lynn? I have, I'm very proud to say that uh, because we're, we're making an investment in their lives. 
and you're paying for it. And Camp Ecomet is setting up a special deal that makes it much easier. So I want to thank the congregation for, 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 for doing this. And God is really moving in this congregation. I'm telling you, do not discount that. You keep praying about it. Now, does anybody, did anybody here not, uh, did anybody here miss something in the band this morning? The drums. Who said that? Drums. Okay. Drums. The drummer needed a vacation. The drummer went on vacation. We all need vacations, right? But it was missed. When we have a team, a congregation, a group of people, if there's somebody not there, it's not the same sound. It's not the same. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying it's not time to preach yet. But here's the deal. When there's somebody missing from the congregation, from the band, we're a group of people coming together, we're missed. And you're missed. Len says that every Sunday. Every Sunday he says that. You are missed. And you're needed here. We're all needed here. So um, if you want to play uh, drums when the drummer goes on vacation, see Len. But uh, we are missed. And thank God this band is awesome, right? Yes. It is. Yeah, go ahead. So we're going to receive the offering now. And I'm going to pray for it, and we're going to go on. Father, I thank you for this beautiful and gorgeous day. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll fall upon this place today in a mighty way. In a mighty, mighty way that you will fill our cups overflowing. Overflowing with praise. Overflowing with, with favor. Overflowing, oh God, today. That you will come and fall upon us and just make us... Uh, real, unauthentic, and just make us be the people of God, the glorious people of God that you so desire. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, that I can minister to this congregation. I thank you, Father, for what's all going on in this place. And I pray for this offering, that you would receive this offering and bless this offering. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.
morning, everyone. Today's reading is from Mount 1 Peter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Athena, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace to yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that they have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things, for it is written, be holy, because I am holy. This is God's word for God's people. We have been studying the book of Peter last week and this week, and we're going to continue on. When I, when I preach sermons or, or teach classes and things, I tell the people that if we don't quite understand what our lesson is about today, we need to go sometimes to the previous chapter and read some of the verses at the end of that chapter. It's going to make us more aware of where we are. In our lesson today, if I go through to, to the previous uh, chapter, I would go to First, first Peter 21 through 25 and this is what it says this is before we get into the lesson today <clears throat> through Christ you have come to trust in God and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth so now you must show sincere in my Bible that's bold that's in bold, could be italics, but in my Bible it's bold. You must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your hearts. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. As the scriptures say, and we say this at each funeral that I do, at each funeral that, you, that I'm ever officiate at this is what we say people are like grass their beauty is like a flower of the field the grass withers and the flowers fade but the word of the Lord remains forever and that word is the good news that was preached to you that's the apostle Peter talking he writes here that, that to this congregation of people, he's writing to a church. He's writing just like to a church just like this. And then the pastor would read these letters to the church. That would be the message of that particular day. And that's what we're doing here today. We read that Peter says that you come through Christ... You have come to trust in God through Christ. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Jesus' name is not Jesus Christ. That's not his last name. Jesus was a very popular name back in that time. Very popular name. The way they identified Jesus was he was the Christ. It would be printed Jesus the Christ. And the word Christ means the anointed one, the Messiah, the Savior, the Christ, 
That's what we're talking about when we talk about Jesus Christ. Now, Denise and I were at the ball game last night, the Phillies baseball game, and there is people in front of us talking about Jesus. There is people in back of us talking about Jesus, but they weren't talking about the same thing that we're talking about here today. They were using Jesus' name in a different way than what we're using the name of Jesus Christ here today. When that happens, I'm at a ball game, if I hear it happen, I'll say, whoa! What's that? Did you hear that? Did you hear what people were saying? Because we are different. We are holy people. That's what we talked about last week. We are different people. We are holy people. The, the root word of the word holy is different. We're in a different setting here today. I said last week that the eagles were having uh, their, their practice... They're going to practice a little bit more. But last week, but I'm an Eagle fan. I'm an Eagles fan. I have an Eagles t a shirt. A regular shirt with the name Warnberger written on the back of it. Number 27. I said, I'll bet there'll be 100 people at that practice. No, I said, I'll bet there's 1,000 people there at that practice. You know how many people last Sunday morning at 10 o'clock was watching the Eagles practice? Do you know how many? It's 36,000 people. They weren't in church. No, we were in church because why? Because we're different. We're different than the world. This is different. When I first came to this congregation, we wanted to start a contemporary service just like this. We wanted to have a live band. We didn't have this. We want to have a live band. We want to have instruments playing. We want to have singers singing. And I said, we can use this fellowship hall. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean use the fellowship hall? We eat there. We can't have church here. We eat here. Well, well we got to be different. We got to be different. It's a little like this. There was a mouse. And this mouse had little mice. And these mice would get up at night and walk around. And there's a cat. The cat's name is Bella. And one night, these little mice, they were going along like this. And all of a sudden, Bella's eye one eye opened up. And her eye opened up, the cat's eye opened up, and the mice were right there. Bella raised her paw like this. Do you have, any of you have cats? Oh yeah, your cat's all right. Raised it like that, the paw like that. And the mama mouse didn't know what to do. So she turned around and she said, ruff, 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 ruff. <laughs> Bella jumped, took off, ran down the hall, never to bother the mice again. Listen, sometimes in life we need to have a different voice, don't we? Yes, we do. Need to have a different voice. So we have a different voice here. We are different people. We are holy people. Now you had the advantage. I didn't tell that story downstairs at 9 o'clock. No, you have the advantage here. Because I didn't do it. He goes, I forgot it. <laughs> but we're different people. It says in this book of, of, of Peter, it says that, that, that we need to trust God. We need Look at your coins. Look at your money. It says on there, in God we trust. It doesn't say in God we should trust. It doesn't say in God we may trust. It says in God we trust. And speaking of the, the, the nation, speaking of, we, we need to really get a grip and be different people and what's going on in this world today. What's going on down in Virginia today is, is an awful mess. It's an awful thing down there. And we need to get back to God. We need to really begin to really trust God for all things in our lives. But, but, but when we trust God, what we're doing is we're clinging to God. We're admitting, we're saying, I can't do this on my own. I can, whatever's going on in my life, I can't do it on my own. I've tried it. I began to sing the song, I did it my way. 
I did it my way. No, Hornberger, you didn't do it your way. You do it God's way. Then it's done right. That's the right way. But we cling to God. We trust God. We obey God. We're saying we can't do it, so God, I'm going to trust you to do this. I'm going to ask you to do it. There are people in life, and I, and I met a lot of people like this, and people come to my mind when I write a message like this, that said, I don't need God. I can do it myself. I have a lot of money. I have a good business. What do I need God for? Here's something that we all need to understand. That there's this life, and then there's another life, and then there's judgment. Hebrews 9.27 says this, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, we're all appointed once to die, but after that comes judgment. Comes judgment. Now you see, Jesus took your sins that are believers. Jesus died in your place. And you'll be able to be judged. But Jesus Christ took your penalty for what the judgment would be. That does not mean that on this earth, when we fail, when we make mistakes, when we sin, when we sin on purpose, yes. that there's not consequences for it because there is. You have your salvation, but there are things that can come along in our life. Peter is telling us, his readers, that we placed our faith and hope in God because He raised Christ from the dead and gave Him great glory. We here have put, that are believers, have put our faith in Christ, in, have put our faith and our hope in God. Faith meaning that we believe it before we see it. We really believe this before we see it. And our hope is, is the best is yet to come, or there's something good right around the corner for us. That's right. And then Peter writes that God raised Christ from the dead, and just as God raised Christ from the dead, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us. Now I say that maybe every week, don't I? About that, about once a week. I'm going to tell you where I get that from. I get that from Romans chapter 8, verse 11, and I want to read it to you. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. Just as God raised Christ from the dead, and He will give your life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. That's where I get that from. And, and, it's, and it's very, very important, I feel, to know that and to understand that. But Peter writes on, he says that believers were cleansed from their sins when we believed. And then it says, he says, and we must. It doesn't say that it's a good idea, not a good idea, do it if you want to do it. We must show sincere love to the brothers and to the sisters. The people in the church. A sincere love. And you say, well, what's a sincere love? And actually, the way this is written, this is written sort of in a negative tone. And here's why it's sort of written in a negative tone. It's telling us that we must love in a non-hypocritical way. Now, I'm going to explain that to you. In the Bible times, and when you go when you go to Israel, the train's full for this year, next year, but there might be another trip. You can stand and you'll be there, and the people that were there can be my judge. Like in an amphitheater, a big theater outside. This was built back then. And and, and there and there's many, many seats, and these seats are cement. They were built back in Jesus' time or before that. You can stand on the center stage and you can talk in a voice just like this without a microphone or anything. And you can be heard all over. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about in the Bible times when there was plays, where there was dramas, where was the theater, where things were going on. They had all male actors. There was no female actress or actresses. That didn't exist back then. And they didn't call, the name wasn't actors, they were called hypocrites. Now for us that sounds really weird, walking around saying, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a hypocrite. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I'm in college right now. What are you studying? I have to be a hypocrite. Um, <laughs> thanks, Anthony. That's the way that is, I'm telling you. They called them hypocrites. 
See, it's a different language for us. But what they're saying is that I'm an actor or an actress. Jesus said to the, to, the, to, the, to the Pharisees, don't be a hypocrite. Well, what did he mean when he said that? Here's what he meant. Women, men, it was men actors, men hypocrites, had a woman's part, they would wear a mask of a woman. So what Jesus is saying and what Peter is saying in our lesson today is don't be wearing a mask when you're loving somebody. If this is sincere love, don't be wearing a mask. Take the mask off. Be real. Be authentic. I went to leadership training this week for renewal. You'll love this. I went away for four days down to Camp Acoma. That was the other week before with the kids teaching. Then I went back for four more days. And um, it was a workshop for renewal for seasoned pastors. <laughs> you know what a seasoned pastor is? <laughs> He or she is my age. Been in the ministry. And, and we had renewal. And JT, it was really good. It really was great, I'm telling you. And also, there was a people going into, uh, uh, there was a group there that were provisional uh, going into becoming ordained. It was just a really good experience. And, um, and why are you talking about this, John? The Bible tells us not to wear these masks that we're supposed to love authentically. Well, the reason I'm saying it is because I was introduced and a person said there, what you see in John is what you get. He's real. He's here. Here he is. This is what John is. If he acts this way, if he does this this way, this is who he is. But years ago, in 1980, there was a movie, for you youngsters, called Mask. And Cher was, Cher was the, the mother of a young boy, a teenager boy, that had a disease. And this is based on a true story. He had a disease, and he wore a mask to school and things. And the kids made, I mean, it was brutal. The kids made fun of him. He had the kind of a personality, though, that he could really override a lot of things. He really did. And uh, the best-looking boy in high school, the best-looking guy there, uh, the most popular guy, was talking to him one day outside the school bus, and he said to this young fellow that wears the mask, he said, why don't you, real sarcastically, why don't you take off your mask? And this young fellow said back to him, I'll take off my mask if you take off your mask. Mm -hmm. See, that's what Jesus is talking about. That's what Peter's talking about. That's what we're talking about in our lesson today. We want to be authentic. We want to love people deeply. And Peter says, why would you do that? Why should we love in a sincere way? The reason we do love in a sincere way is Peter says it's because we're born again. Now that's a term that you may not hear very much in churches. You may not hear that in church your services that you go to, that we're born again, that we're born anew, that we're born from above. We are born again. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament, way back in the Old Testament, that once we had hearts of stone, and when Christ came into our lives and changed us, He gave us a heart of flesh. We are different people. Therefore, if any man or any woman be in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You're a new creation. You're a new person. You're not who you were before. When you went before Jesus Christ and asked Christ to forgive us for our sins and we claim what was done on the cross was a victory and you go before God and you ask for forgiveness for your sins, you will receive forgiveness. It doesn't mean that we won't have regrets. I have many regrets. I have many things that come to my mind. I have many things that surface in my mind. And I wish they weren't there, but they're there. They're still there, even though I have a new heart. Now we're going to go to our lesson. We have seven minutes to go into the, to the lesson. My mom's looking down at me and saying, John, I told you never to drink water from a congregation unless you have enough water for everybody. <laughs> In our lesson, it says that we are to get rid 
of evil behavior. See, we're different. We need to be different than we were when we came to Jesus. We really do. Peter writes, get rid of evil behavior. In my version it says, be done. Be done with that. Be done with deceit. Be done with hypocrisy. Be done with jealousy. Be done with unkind speech. Be done with that stuff. If we have deceit, be done with it. If we're wearing mask in life, be done with it. Take the mask off and become real. Be done with jealousy. I don't know if any of you have ever been jealous. I have been jealous already. Okay? I'll admit that. But I want to tell you something. Jealousy is going to kill you. It will. It's going to kill you. It's going to make you have a miserable life if you're a jealous person. If you're an envious person, it's going to, it's going to do you in. That's why, that's why the Holy Spirit told Peter to say this. Be done with this stuff. Because when you're done with that, you can live a good life, a happy life, a happy life in Jesus Christ. He says, be, this is what Peter said, be like newborn babies who crave, you crave spiritual milk. You crave coming to church. You desire coming to church. You want to, start, you want to start going to the men's Bible study that we're having coming up in October. We want to, we want to uh, get, get into disciple groups. We have disciple groups signed up downstairs. We want, to, we want to get more of the Word of God. We want to be into the Word of God. We want to be doing more things like this. Because we, we cry out for this nourishment. I know what it means for a baby to cry out at 3 o'clock in the morning for nourishment. We take care of the children on weekends. We take care of them. When little Junior wakes up, I don't know what he's thinking, but he's thinking there's something wrong with my little tummy. My little tummy needs something. I crave something. And what I'm craving right now, Mimo, is a change diaper and a warm bottle of milk and I'll be satisfied. In our lesson, we're saying we need to have this milk and God will get us on to other food. Get us on to baby food and then get us on to, to other food that we can eat and digest. But for now, we need to have milk and we're to cry out. Cry equals brain. It says, now that you have tasted of the Lord's kindness, when little Junior first got that taste of milk, he went bananas. He loved it. He wants more of it. We as Christian people read the Word of God and our desire is to have more and more and more of the Word of God because we've tasted it. In the Psalms 34, 8, it says this, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. That word blessed means this, be happy, spiritually prosperous, be empowered. Be in a great place when you're in a great place in Jesus Christ. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, 2, I gave you milk, not solid food, because you weren't ready for it. And then Paul writes, Indeed, you're not ready even yet. But then Peter writes in verse 9 to each one of us, this is what Peter writes, But you're not like that. You folks here aren't like that. Here's what you're like. You're a chosen people. You're a royal priest. A royal priest. Not just a priest. You're the royal priest. Well, what's a priest? What's a royal priest? That's the chief priest. That's the big shot. That's where you want to be. If you're in the Catholic Church, you can be a priest. And you can be... Uh, what's next? Well, anyhow... Anyhow, go all the way up to the cardinal. You're up to the pope. You're the pope. You're the highest priest there is. That's what God looks at us. And this is what he says. You are a holy nation, different. You are God's very own possession. I'd like you to do something today. You don't have to do it here. But I'd like you to do something what I just read there is a Bible verse. You are God's very own possession. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that you're God's very own possession. 
And that God loves you so much that you're unique. Think about that because it's true. It's not me making this up. It's not part of my sermon. It's, it's, it's in the Bible. As a result, Peter writes that you can show others the goodness of God just as he called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. There were some men meeting this morning downstairs before worship and they were in the library and the lights hadn't been turned on. They were sitting there in the dark and they were talking. I walked into the room and I turned the light on and when I did, they, they went like, you know, they, they sheltered their eyes like that. The light came on. The lights came on. See, we were living in darkness, but now we're living in the light. That's where we're at. So we need to live in the light. We need to walk in the light. And not just a light, but a wonderful light. A wonderful light, it says. Wonderful. That's what you folks are walking in today. A wonderful light. And it's yours as we go along, as we walk and journey together in Jesus Christ. In verse 10, Peter writes that you had no identity as a people, and now you're God's people. See, the Jewish people had identity. They were God's chosen people. They were the Hebrew people. They were favored people. The Jews are favored people. But now Peter says, but you're favored people. You're God's chosen people. That's who you are. The Gentiles, that's who we are. The Greeks, that's who we are. We're now God's chosen people. You're not slaves to sin. You're not slaves to sin. It says in Romans 6.18 that we too were slaves, but you've been set free from sin and have become slaves to what? Anybody know? Righteousness. You say, wow, that's a pretty big word, preacher. Righteousness. We could take a whole series and just talk about righteousness. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you in, in, third, in, in two seconds what it means, okay? It means right living. Do we all know what right living is? You know all living is right, living right? If your children here and you don't know, ask your mom or dad what's right living. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. Right living. We're different. We're a holy people, a holy nation. We're set up altogether different. But Peter said at one time you had no identity. No identity at all. I preached, I preached it up in a, in, a, in a prison in, in Pennsylvania. And one of the things that I noticed there was this. There's a lot of people there. It's all men. It's a men's prison. All men. And when they want to call somebody out to talk to or for somebody to go somewhere out the door wherever they were going, they, they, they walk across the front with a sign, like a placard. Is that what it's called, a placard? Something like that. They walk along like this. Now, if you did this here in this congregation, if you were wanted outside or wanted somewhere, we wouldn't do this in here, but it would have your name on it. In prison, they don't have your name on it. They have your number on it. See, you're, you're not identified any longer by your name. You're identified by a number. By now you know that my grandson is in prison. Two to four years. And when he writes to me above his name, 